escaped the room employees, what is the weirdest thing you've seen someone do in one of the rooms? The most depressing shit I saw was a tired looking couple who brought in their bespectacled, NASA shirt wearing 8 year old geek of a son in to have some fun. The parents couldn't have been more discouraging to him. He was excitedly bouncing around the room pointing out things that he thought were clues clues while the parents dismissed every idea he had and told him to stop getting so excited. The parents took charge and proceeded to ignore the obvious clues he was pointing out and spent most of the time pursuing dead ends. Sad part is his instincts were more often than not correct but his parents just didn't listen and refused to let him explore and try stuff out. Hopefully his curiosity and enthusiasm survives them. Oh wait I thought of another one. So we do proposals. Bring in the final puzzle box, proposal signs, whole package deal, people love it. Dude calls up to set up a proposal, I ask what room he wants etc. So then I tell him the total price to book out the entire room for the proposal. He says he just wants to buy the two tickets for him and his girlfriend, I tell him we can't have strangers playing a game that their experience is impacted, altered by the fact that there's a proposal going on. Proposal happens in an escape room, there's no longer a game, it becomes about the proposal. I know this because I've seen it happen a hundred times. Anyway, dude refuses to buy out all of the tickets. Says he wants strangers to be there, he's not going to buy the other four tickets. I hand the phone to my manager, they hash out details together. Over the next three weeks leading up to the proposal, this guy calls every single fucking day. There's nothing else to figure out, we've got it all set up, but this guy is constantly badgering us. The big day rolls around, he arrives early so he can hide out, and this dude is a kid. Like, pimple-faced, voice cracking, hair growing in weird places kind of kid. Everybody in the control room is talking about him, because he's been a thorn in our collective sides for weeks, and we're speculating about telling him marriage at his age is a horrible idea, but whatever it's too late. So he hides, the girl and her friends show up, they get started and we stash the dude in the second hidden room that they'll eventually end up in. Everybody crowds around the monitor to watch and this guy pulls out a bouquet of flowers and unfurls a sign that says, name redacted, will you go with me to prom? And the entire staff loses their collective shit. Weeks of constant pestering, endless phone calls, and the most stressful proposal deal we've ever put together. For a fucking promposal. She said no. I worked at a room escape place for a year in grad school. I learned very quickly to give thorough warnings at the start of each show that breaking things, assaulting actors, this was trapped in a room with a zombie, and sexual harassment were not cool. Yes, literally had guys harass the fucking zombie mid-show. Perhaps the most interesting phenomenon I noticed was just how much personality factors into the teamwork involved. I've seen a lot of shy people or people otherwise lacking in confidence be completely on the right track, only to be steamrolled by the loudest, more confident, strongest personalities in the room. Maybe it shouldn't have come as so much of a surprise, but I watched perfectly smart, reasonable people actively ignore good points, logic, and strong evidence in service of a cult of personality of charismatic players. The whole thing felt like a depressing study on group dynamics edit, changed, hit on, to, harass, for greater accuracy. I've explained circumstances in follow-up comments. At our establishment we have a room called Jailbreak, with a fake door towards the very end, it's covered with plywood. This girl takes one look at it and says jail, break, and charges the door full force and breaks through. It was only a one-off escape room I designed for a university society event, but one guy was so desperate to find clues he tried to disassemble the wooden casing around a radiator. It scared me because I didn't own the room we were doing this in, so I could have been on serious trouble. Employee here. One group gave up after 5 minutes, and decided to drink alcohol rest of the game. They paid 120 euros for the game. Did a space station themed room. We got paired with a mother and her adult sons. The sons did just fine but mum was clueless. There was a prop fire extinguisher on the wall that she was certain had to be for something. For an hour she wandered around aimlessly carrying a fire extinguisher. Finally, my time to shine. We had a group that was evidently high. They weren't disruptive or anything, so we just briefed them, and took them to their room. So far so good. 
we have cameras and microphones inside the rooms, that way we know what hints to give out. Another important thing is that the room they were at had a small fountain, and since the particular aesthetic of this room was dusty, that water was filthy. I'm talking murky, brown-yellow, mud water. At one point one of the guys says he is thirsty, and proceeds to stick his mouth onto the fountain stream and take a hefty gulp of the shit water. We spend a second of shock, guffaw, and tell them that drinking the fucking water isn't part of the puzzle. The guy reads the hint and just says, that's alright. He proceeded to do the same thing four times and drank the whole fountain, small fountain, but still like a gallon of mud water. We've had more inconvenient things happen, but that still remains as the worst thing I've ever seen. Escape room employee here. In one of our rooms, we have an actor pose as a spy, and the people in the room had to solve a case to figure out who the traitor was. After they finished the puzzles, it turns out the traitor was actually the spy the actor was playing. The spy then pulls an obviously prop gun, orange tip and whatnot, and the group has to defuse a fake bomb. One of the groups that did this room was a police squad that was doing this to Bond. When the actor pulled the fake gun and said some cheesy lines, the actor was promptly tackled and restrained until the cops realized it was all a game. Edit, it's diffuse, and not diffuse. I'm a dang old goofus. We give people a box for them to bring in, so they can store their belongings while they play. One time, about halfway in, an inquisitive older man started going through their own stuff. He pulled out a purse and shouts guys, guys, I found some, this is our stuff isn't it? It was hilarious. Escape room employee here, we have a game that has wooden floors and guests regularly try to pull up the nailed down floorboards with the hammer that's in the room, thinking they'll find clues. Also one time I asked the group if they had ever played an escape game before, and an elderly gentleman responded, one time my wife tied me up and gagged me. Does that count? His friends thought it was hilarious, but the high school couple that was obviously on a first date they were paired up with did not find it as funny. Edit, I just remembered another common thing people do. Sometimes halfway through a game, someone that wasn't paying attention will walk up to the entrance, realize it's unlocked, and tell the rest of the group they solved it. Then group think sets in and everyone just stands in the hallway as their time runs out. Just started working at Escape the Room and we have rules about not jumping out the windows and not sticking keys into wall sockets because it has all happened before. Went to an Escape the Room with some friends on Friday. My one friend took his shirt off four times. The crazier thing that happened though was how we solved it. We were supposed to get the word Waterloo from a series of clues and use a dictionary to find that the Battle of Waterloo was in 1815. Use that four digit number to get a key that let us out of the room. Well we got the word Italoi instead of Waterloo. We assumed that it was an anagram and we used a word scrambler to get the word Aerolite from it. Using the dictionary we found that Aerolite was invented in 1815. Well we got the key and we confidently told the employee how we figured it out. He was dumbfounded. I'm not exactly sure what the odds of solving the room like this is, but if someone could solve that for us that'd be dank. My friends and I have been trying to figure it out since it happened. I own an escape room and I once guided couple into one of our more moody ambience room and they told me we would totally base a sex dungeon off this vibe. See, you even have a desk in here to get started. Also you see people's true parenting skills. My favorite quote is from a lovely family that went into a room and five minutes in the father gathered his overeager children and told them, you're being assholes. We're in a huge tech area and we get a lot of corporate groups with some very important people. A week ago we had a Fortune 500 CEO through and he walked up to my staff and started bragging about his 50,000 Instagram followers, basically trying to impress college kids. We definitely giggled about that one especially when we looked him up and he had like 300 followers. But hey, he killed it in the room. Two best stories from www.pandoraslocks.ca, there are more but these are the best. 1. We have a room themed like a teen girl's bedroom in the 80s, it has a phone in it, players can use it. A group of young girls had no idea what it was or how it worked, having grown up with cell phones only, so their game master had to explain it to them, best part was it was her personal friends and she was super embarrassed for them. 2. Same room, Game Master saw someone with a lighter on camera, immediately interrupted the room and casually asked why they were using a lighter that they shouldn't have brought in with them. They replied that they were lighting their farts on fire. She suggested that, while hilarious, this might not be the best place for that. 
Someone cleared all the boxes and locks off of a table in the corner, laid down on it, and went to sleep until the group escaped. Finally an ask credit I can help with. I have too many stories for the escape room I help manage. One situation quickly came to mind when I read this. In our prison-style escape room we have a laser maze that players need to crawl, climb through to deactivate and move forward. Two players are required to finish, or so I thought, the laser maze because there are three buttons to be pressed, where the third button is out of reach from the other two. A family came in to play our game with a younger boy, a very fit, relevant girl in her early 20s, their parents, and their grandfather who had some disability that required him to use those crutches that wrap around your forearms. So they play through and get to the laser maze. The girl got through fairly easily, but they needed to move fast since the timer was running. The young boy had a great idea, here, use grandpa's crutch. At which point he takes the crutch straight from grandpa and slides it past all the lasers to his sister at the other end. I was fascinated at this point but even with the crutch it was a long stretch to hit them all. The girl took a second to find the right spot on the floor, planted her foot there, went into a perfect perpendicular stretch with one foot on the ground, one foot on the far button, on hand on the middle button, and finally reaching the last button with the crutch. That family came out of the room so proud and she boasted to the family about her daily yoga, almost convincing me to sign up for yoga because it was so impressive. That was one of the most creative and weirdest successful solutions to a puzzle I've seen in my years working there. For some reason people like to put the flashlight that one of our rooms has in their mouth when they know they aren't the only ones who have used them. Some people put them between their legs, in the crack of their ass as a joke, and not to mention just roll around the ground a majority of the time. Besides that I've seen relationships almost fall apart. One couple insisted on going into our most challenging room just the two of them, and we let them know this was probably not going to be a good idea or enjoyable for them, but they didn't really care. You could tell the guy wanted to impress the girl, but both of them were dumber than rocks. I had to sit for an entire hour watching them get literally nowhere through the first puzzle arguing with each other and then sitting in moments of awkward silence. I offered to give them help and said I would just tell them if they wanted at this point, but they refused. Also people love to not listen to our disclosure we have to give before we send groups into rooms and kick in our air vents and break through our drywall and ceilings when we specifically say not to and put tape that says not a part of the game in bright yellow colors. Consider subscribing, 